Pekje, a land that existed 1500 years ago. The tomb of King Mudeong is full of secrets and unsolved mysteries about the world of Pekje. The wooden coffins in which the king and queen are resting for eternity. There is a surprising secret to these coffins which have managed to last for a long time. The tomb of King Mudeong was revealed to the world after 1500 years, full of priceless artifacts that showed the true face of Pekje. At the time of the excavation, in the inner chambers of the deepest part of the tomb, wooden coffins were found. The fragments of the crumbling coffin were scattered on the ground, and seemed to be too many to have belonged to one person. In front of the tomb guardian, there was a memorial stone that told us who the tomb belonged to. The stone recorded that King Sama, the name of King Mudeong as a child, had died at the age of 62. There was also a record about the queen. So King Mudeong's coffin was laid to the east, and the queen's coffin was laid to the west. The wooden coffins of the king and queen were from the Three Kingdoms period. They're the only coffins whose exact size and shape can be determined. However, how did they last for 1,500 years without rotting away? This is the wood from the queen's coffin. It is from the side of the coffin. We gathered a sample from the wood and analyzed the type of tree that was used. The cell structure that we saw through an electron microscope had the shape of a rectangular window. Japanese umbrella pines are the only species to have this resin pocket shape and structure. The coffins of the king and queen have been made from Japanese umbrella pines. Then, where do these pine trees grow? Japanese umbrella pines inhabit southern Japan, which has plenty of rainfall. It mainly grows in Mount Koya, which is near Osaka. Mount Koya is famous for its Japanese umbrella pines. The pine trees are very solid and strong against humidity, so they are considered to be the highest quality wood for coffins. Does that mean that the wood from King Mudeong's coffin came from Japan? The wood used for King Mudeong's coffin was a 300-year-old tree that weighed over four tons. Gigantic trees grow in Mount Koya's pine tree forest. The best umbrella pines that stand upright are from forests with densely populated pine trees, like Mount Koya. That means that the wood for King Mudeong's coffin, which weighed four tons and was 1.3 meters wide, must have come from Mount Koya. Japanese umbrella pines are considered sacred in Japan and were only used for the ruling class. Then how did the Japanese umbrella pine tree end up being used for the wooden coffins of Pekje's king and queen? On two occasions, King Mudeong sent the learned of the five Confucian classics to Japan. The best intellectual scholars and technicians of the time were sent to Japan to spread new cultures. At the time of King Mudeong, there had been active exchanges between Pekje and Japan and had formed close ties. The wooden coffins which were made with Japan's best local product could have been sent by Japan to King Mudeong as a gift. King Mudeong absorbed Chinese culture and passed it on to Japan. Pekje had an open and dynamic view of the world and thus led cultural advancements 1,500 years ago, becoming the center of cultural exchanges in East Asia. Pekje is known to be a tragic state, 
that was the first of the three kingdoms to disappear from the Korean peninsula. For many years, it was only perceived as a small state. However, this perception must be re-evaluated. The tomb of King Muryong tells us of the greatness of Baekje 1,500 years ago. The discovery of King Muryong's tomb was the largest achievement in Korean archaeology in the 20th century. Although it is regrettable that the excavation was rushed, Many important cultural assets were unearthed and triggered new studies in Baekje's history. 4,687 cultural assets of 108 types were excavated from the tomb. The artifacts were unearthed amidst great surprise and excitement. Among them, 17 artifacts of 12 types were designated as national treasures. The king's diadem ornament, discovered in King Muryong's tomb, is shaped like a burning flame and looks dynamic and impressive. The queen's diadem ornament is simpler. It is shaped like a lotus flower blooming inside a vase. The vast amount of relics inside the tomb tells us of the glorious culture of Baekje. The technology used to make such exquisite metal crafts shows us the greatness of Baekje art and its bold beauty. The silver cup with the bronze stand, which is second only to the gilt bronze incense burner of Baekje, is considered to be a beautiful artifact with its unique patterns. The silver cup was found near the queen's head at the time of the excavation and is carved with beautiful and bold patterns unique to Baekje. The burial objects found in the large tomb tell us of Baekje's view of the world at the time. Baekje's culture was open and dynamic. King Muryong's tomb shows that there was exchange between Baekje and China. The structure of the tomb, which was built with bricks, was a style that was popular during the time of China's southern dynasties. The artifacts that were found in King Muryong's tomb also show us that international relations were centered around Baekje 1,500 years ago. In the year 475, Wide Fortress of Hansong, Baekje's capital, had burnt down and King Kedo and the royal family were murdered by the Goguryeo army. Due to the southern expansion policy of Goguryeo's King Changsu, Baekje was pushed back to Ungjin, where it laid the foundation for its revival. In order to overcome the threats that the nation faced, such as the threat of Goguryeo and internal instability, King Muryong decided to use a strategy of internationalization. Owing to King Muryong's internationalization, Baekje was able to rebuild itself. King Muryong actively adopted the advanced culture of China. He learned from it and passed it on to Japan. By sending the scholars of the five Chinese classics to Japan, Baekje played a leading role in the international exchanges of East Asia. The internationality of embracing East Asian culture, this was the power of Baekje. 1,500 years ago, Baekje had a broad view of the world and traveled throughout East Asia. The tomb of King Muryong revived the history of Baekje, enabling us to rediscover its glorious past. It is a splendid monument that is witness to Korean history 1,500 years ago.